Hey YouTube, Copperstan here. Over the years, the Maple Story has done a lot of things right, from the amazing map designs to the always on point soundtrack. Maple Story is a classic in every way. But today I want to spend some time not talking about what's so amazing about this game, but what can be improved upon. Feel free to share your own thoughts about how MapleStory can improve in the comments. I plan to collect and organize all feedback and send it to Nexon as a whole. Over the last few months, it has become abundantly clear that while MapleStory is on point in some of the things it does, it is also hopelessly outdated in some other areas. Jumping right into the first topic, random box transparency. While Nexon does publish the rates of most cash random boxes on their website, there are some random boxes or items that have random effects as well where the players do not have the slightest idea what the odds are. The most important random box to mention here of course is cubes. Those are bought with either money or players spend hours collecting mesos to obtain them. But yet we do not know their odds, which is kinda odd. After the probability calculation screw up with inner abilities and flames, Nexon Korea released the cube rates for the Korean server. It was only there that it was actually confirmed that there were some special rules that were never clearly communicated by Nexon. For example, weapons could only have two lines of boss damage and not three. I find it crazy that Nexon never disclosed it, and that Nexon America still has not disclosed any of this. Disclosing rates of these random boxes is not something special. However, Nexon is still lagging behind a lot when it comes to random box transparency. Another thing that I find very important is game balance. MapleStory is an old game with a lot of systems, a lot of jobs and skills that all need to be balanced. However, it seems that sometimes the developers forget that MapleStory is not a game that's only released in Korea. And of course I realize that MapleStory Global and MapleStory C are not bringing in the most revenue and don't have the same amount of players as MapleStory Korea does. But it feels like the developers are not actively considering their content for other regions. The recent change to Thunderbreaker skills and delay comes to mind for example. In Korea, almost everyone has an excellent internet connection, but this isn't always the case for the rest of the world, yet jobs are balanced as if everyone can play on the lowest ping only available in some parts of the world. The only reason we need to fill out our pin when we go to storage or open a notestone menu is because of PC cafes where a lot of MapleStory Korean players play, but in the west PC cafes barely exist, yet we got all those systems. Or for example in MapleStory Global the speed cap is different compared to MapleStory Korea, making some classes a lot stronger than others, yet our skill balance changes are always copied over from MapleStory Korea without taking this into account. Balance is also a big topic when it comes to spawn boosters which is my next point on the copper complaint list. The Kana class has a crazy big advantage over other classes due to her spawn increase mechanics. Maplers who have a frenzy totem have a crazy big advantage over maplers who don't, and so maplers won't even train without using wild totems. Heck, I wouldn't even train without wild totems. <laughs> but this also becomes a problem for the maplers who don't have access to a totem or kishin. Honestly, I think either all spawn boosters need to be removed and the spawn rates in maps just should be improved, or everyone should have access to spawn boosters all the time. For example, through 5th job node skills or link skills. This way, there will be a more even playing field for all maplers. Next, improvement. Because MapleStory is such an old game, there's also a big imbalance between new and old players. Think of content that's no longer available but gave out awesome rewards or events with permanent rewards that are no longer obtainable. The whole reason why Wonderoid is so popular as an event is because it offers a permanent heart that is impossible to get otherwise in Reboot. If you didn't play during the exact time the event was active, you'll have to wait until the event is available again. Or if you're unlucky, the event just never comes back and you have no chances of getting that item. Balancing events is difficult and we want to get a good reward for the events we participate in. But the developers seem to have forgotten that there are no alternatives to some items in the game. Good luck getting permanent totems with decent stats without event totems for example. And some items like badges that can have potential were removed from the game, giving all maplers that have those badges an additional advantage over others who don't. Which might not be super important for most of us, but try going for a high dojo rank only to be beaten every single time because you didn't play during an event back in 2014 where Maplers could get an overpowered item that hasn't returned since. And my next point is another balancing philosophy that the MapleStory developers seem to have been balancing towards to a lot. It's time in game. 
Over time, MapleStory has been getting more and more time consuming, with big updates releasing more and more dailies, and returning events are being rebalanced to take up more and more time. The developers almost seem to have this obsession with making sure Maples never log out and just play for hours upon end. And from a business point of view, this does make sense. If your customer spends more time on your product, they're more likely to spend. However, in my opinion, there's one critical error being made here. The developers are actively blocking progression and are forcing the players to wait while instead they could also do it the other way around. Instead of blocking progression, just encourage progression so much that players want to keep playing. Take the recent Wonderoid event again as an example. Right now there's a 100 daily coin limit on farming coins from monsters. And I don't want to do the jump quest. It's buggy and I just hate doing it. I don't, I'm not going to do it. So I just ignore this event completely. However, if I could farm unlimited coins, I would probably participate on all my characters and play a lot more. Similar to how Maplers still need to pay for additional character slots in the regular server. This paywall is actively stopping me from creating more characters that I might spend money on in the long run. Or similar to cash items being locked to characters of a certain race. The developers seem almost so afraid of losing out on even the slightest bit of revenue that they're forcing their customers to keep purchasing new cash items because the ones you paid for before are now locked behind an invisible wall that the developer put there. You know, there is a reason why a lot of Maplers stick to one or two mains. Because it would either be impossible or too expensive otherwise to transfer your gear. Or you have to wait for a cash transfer event, but those are only happening sporadically. I'm of the opinion that Nexon could potentially earn even more revenue if they just made it easier to enjoy the game more. The game is good, just encourage your Maplers to play more in a more positive way, by removing those blockers. Point number 6 is again transparency. The MapleStory developers and balancers always have been very silent. Changes were made by them because they were deemed better and were never really elaborated on. I think it actually shows a little bit of lack of respect. Of course we understand that not every change will benefit us, but Nexon never really elaborates on the why. For example, recently Meso 2 raids were nerfed and this is what Nexon said about it. We regularly review and assess game content we bring to our servers, and upon our recent review, we found that Maple 2 is in need of an adjustment. Since the game status has changed from when it was implemented, we saw the current master rewards in Maple 2 are a bit too high compared to other content, causing an imbalance to the economy and master distribution between levels. We therefore are going to make some adjustments in hope of being more faithful to the intended balance. Now maybe I'm nitpicking, and please let me know if I am, but I think this explanation is not good enough. I would like to see something visual, perhaps a graph to show me then how was it in balance. Like were Maple is skipping out on weeks of progress compared to before or were they flooding the economy. The Star Force prices are very high in MapleStory Global, yet those were never adjusted either so it seems unfair from the player point of view that their way to earn masses is getting nerfed but the rate at which they spend it is never really adjusted ever. This seems unfair to me, hence the negative user sentiment this change got as well. If the game balancers would just explain their choices better I think it wouldn't be as severe. Unless their balancing is completely off, of course. <laughs> Point 7 is about quality insurance. And I have to give kudos to Nexon here, actually. Because MapleStory, for as long as I can remember, has never ever delayed an update by, let's say, a week to fix some issues. But, you know, at what price? Again, this seems to be a company culture thing, but I do not understand why Nexon sometimes just, just doesn't delay updates to get more polishing in. The recent few maintenances and updates have been nothing short of a disaster. Events had to be reset, some events could not be completed. There recently was a bug where any form of damage reflection would DC Maplers. Like, MapleStory is a big and old game. We get that. But in my opinion, Nexon needs to worry less about a very tight update and bug fixing schedule and actually start delivering a more bug free and solid product that is actually playable. Not every bug needs to be fixed, but having to reset the progress of an entire event just because a bug with the rewards wasn't properly fixed is a no-no. Or re-releasing events with bugs that have been there for years that causes fake auto bans, DCs, soft locks. that's not a good look. I'm personally totally fine with waiting a few extra days to enjoy a less buggy game. Always. Wow, you can really trust a Dutch guy to complain for at least 8 minutes straight. I had one more fun suggestion, but this one is a bit more personal. MapleStory has a lot of old school players, so perhaps Nexon could do something like a 3 month event where everyone can play an official old school server. And then the Maplers that reach a certain level milestone are rewarded on their main accounts, like in the lab server, that'd be pretty cool. But that's just a super minor suggestion, I really hope those other points are taken care of first. Again, feel free to share your own thoughts about how MapleStory can improve in the comments. I plan to organize and collect all feedback and send it to Nexon as well. And that was all for today. As always, many thanks to our members for making this video possible. 
Thanks to Niels de Konnek, Rama Waar, Sebastian Hanoi, FLX, Jeff Wang, Pinky Traveler, Terry Kim, Jiju, Galaxy Art, Gusus Rodriguez, Verries, Riser Ayu, Dries Sumker, Plux, Zenny, Wiley, Francisco Sousa, History Cannon, Backspace, OTI, Simax, Safronix, Lonzo, BG Extremes, Harry Gartner, Ido Hyman, Anwar NHI, Brandon, Frank Bouguet, Ziggy Deer, Fine Asian Guy, Mr. Potemkin, Flidiot, Beamer WT, Lach Smits, Edgar, Knife Zoo, and Shen125. If you'd like to mention here as well and get early access to new videos, make sure to check out that join button below this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and happy mapling.